Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Y710 Cube. This is a somewhat portable gaming PC as you can see here. It's not all that lightweight, it's about 15 or 20 pounds, but uh, you can take it with you to gaming events and other things you might be doing. And there's a good amount, whoa, a good amount of horsepower in this thing that we will be uh, exploring over the course of this review. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware. These start at around $929 and there's a, a bunch of different configuration options you can put into it. So at the low end, you can get in uh, at that $930 price tag with an RX 460 GPU from AMD. Uh, this one is going to run you about $1,500 to $1,600 because it has the uh, NVIDIA 1070 built in. I'm going to take it apart in a second so you can see uh, what is inside. And undoubtedly, when I do a pre-assembled gaming PC review, I will get a lot of comments about how you can build this to yourself if you wanted to for less money. And you could probably do that uh, for less money, but some people like to buy a computer out of the box and get working with it, which is the value that a pre-assembled PC will bring you, but if you do want to uh, really complete your Jedi training as a PC gamer, uh, building your own PC is akin to building your own lightsaber, and you should definitely do it at some point along the way as you uh, continue your adventure into PC gaming. So really nice looking case here. Again, you've got the handle on the top here to carry it around. It lights up on the front here. I'll show you what those lights look like when we boot it up. And then when I thought we would just take it apart so we can see what is inside, and then we'll see what all the ports are on the other side. So these panels are typically screwed down. I unscrewed them just to get at them easier, but you can do that without any tools. And on this side, you've got the power supply, only 450 watts though. Uh, so keep that in mind if you are uh, planning to use a uh, heavier GPU in the future. You've got a spinning hard drive here. You've got an SSD down here. Uh, the spinning drive is one terabyte on this configuration. This is a 128 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. And there's room here for additional storage if you wish to add it later. I'm gonna flip it around here to the other side side real quick and some of you who are concerned about cables uh, may not like the layout of this thing here the cables are just kind of a big mishmash uh, so we'll do some thermal uh, discussions in a little bit as well uh, so this is the other side of where the storage is located this one has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM it's configured in dual channel configuration so you have two sticks of eight uh, here's the fan for your power uh, for your CPU here and the CPU is an i7 6700 a quad core chip uh, and it's uh, socketed, so you could change it out in the future if you wish to do that. And that is pretty much the configuration here, along with your GTX uh, 1070 GPU. And then it vents out uh, through the top here. So that is it. It's a very compact design, as you can see. Not a lot of room for uh, moving around in here. So they really were able to cram a lot into a very small space. But you do have a bit of a mess of wires as a result. I know a lot of PC builders would not like to see that uh, in their own PCs. On the top here, you've got the power switch. There are two USB 3.0 ports on the top here, and uh, this one here has the ability to charge your devices when the computer is off. You've got analog audio in and out right there as well. Again, the front here lights up, which you'll see in a minute. On the back here, you've got your other array of ports. So you have the DVI output for the GPU along with the display port and HDMI connectors. Over here, you've got your usual uh, ATX uh, layout here. So you've got some audio uh, inputs and outputs there along with optical audio out. Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, another two USB 2 ports down here, and a PS2 mouse and keyboard connector. If you want to go old school, uh, you can do that. It, this one did come with a keyboard and mouse. You can watch my full unboxing. Uh, not a very good keyboard and mouse for gaming, but it does come with one nonetheless, but you may want to supply your own stuff later. And then, of course, you plug in the power cable on that end to get it all fired up. And speaking of firing it up, let's do that right now. I'm going to put it back together, turn it on, and we'll see how it performs. All right, so everything is up and running now, and here is the desktop. And the nice thing is, is that it does not come with a lot of bloatware. Uh, in fact, they uh, have a little dialog that pops up and asks you if you want to install some stuff. Of course, I said no to everything. I didn't even have to uninstall the McAfee junk that comes on board. Uh, it does have Wi-Fi built in, which I forgot to mention before. It's called the uh, Killer Network Suite, and you can uh, configure that through here. Uh, so there's some way to do some network prioritization within uh, the app here. And this screen here, the nerve center, uh, is the way that you can control some of the LED lighting and get some basic system information about what's going on here. So it lets you know uh, what speed your processor is currently running at, as well as how much RAM and storage you have available and uh, how much of your GPU is being utilized. And this is also how you can turn off the LED light. So if it's too bright, uh, you can go in here and shut it off completely like so, uh, or you can adjust it 
uh, into different levels of lighting. There's only one color though, just red, and you've got uh, two red lights here on the bottom on each side and then the one in the middle here, so I can uh, turn these off and turn them back on again if I want. My studio lights are kind of drowning it out a bit, but you do get the idea as to how that works. So let's take a look now at some gaming, starting with Grand Theft Auto V. All right, so here we are in GTA V, and I went with the uh, suggested settings from the NVIDIA GeForce Experience for this hardware configuration, but you can see what it's set here for everything as I scroll through. And of course, you can make your own settings and make the game look nicer or less nice and increase frame rate or decrease it as a result, but uh, this is what I'm going with here. Here are the advanced graphics settings, and now we'll pop into the game and see what we're getting. So typically I'm doing uh, better than 60 frames per second. Uh, depending on what's going on in the scene, it'll dip down a bit as we're playing around here. I only record at 30 frames per second, so you'll likely see some uh, some tearing going on here when we go well, well above the 30 that I'm recording at, but uh, generally it's been a very good GTA 5 experience, which is what I would expect out of an i7 processor and of course uh, having the GTX 1070 on board here. So not too bad for uh, game playing in the real world here with GTA 5, and I'm sure we can maybe increase the image quality a bit and still uh, not lose all that much in the way of frame rate as we make some adjustments. But uh, one thing I did notice is that uh, right now it's around 80, but sometimes it dips down into the high 50s to the mid 60s depending on what's going on in the particular scene that we're in so gta 5 is an often uh, difficult game to configure for just because it really varies in its performance depending on uh, what's happening in the game while you're playing it here and you can see that frame rate in the upper left hand corner kind of changing quite a bit uh, as just uh, in just the last couple of minutes going through the city here all right, so now let's take a look at the new version of Doom that I've been playing quite a bit of. It's a very fast game, and you can see what I have the settings at here. This is, again, the uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience recommended defaults here that we're running. And then in the upper right-hand corner, you can see the frames per second running here as well. So here we go, and you can see how everything is running. This is a very fast game to begin with, so uh, it really performs well even on lower-end hardware, but here it performs uh, really nice, really a fun game to play, actually. And I've been playing a little bit too much of it today as I've been doing the review here, but uh, really good frame rates here well above 100 frames per second with those settings so I'm sure we could probably increase the visual quality if we want and still uh, be able to keep it around 60 frames per second so if you're looking for uh, something that might run on a really uh, nice uh, gaming monitor that runs at 120 or 144 hertz or something this game with this configuration uh, should do pretty well and I also ran the time spy test from 3d marks gaming benchmarking suite and we got a score there of 5374 on that DirectX 12 test and what was interesting is when you look at other 1070 devices that we have tested, the uh, score here on the graphics side of things lines right up. So that 1070 performs as one would expect it to. We got a little bit better performance out of the i3 build that we did recently with its 1070, but that card was slightly overclocked. Uh, but you can see how that i7 processor makes a difference on the physics test. So uh, we're at about almost 15 frames per second on this i7 uh, compared to about 11 on the i5 that is on the all-in-one from Lenovo we looked at a couple of weeks ago, also a gaming device. What was interesting, though, is that my Haswell i7 on my gaming build over there, the one I built about two years ago here on the channel, uh, that one does a little bit better in its CPU performance versus the Skylake chip on this one. So we're not seeing a huge bump in processor performance lately from one generation to the next. All the growth really has been on the GPU side of things. Now, given the compact size of the computer here, you might be wondering how it does with thermals. So I ran the 3D Mark stress test on it, which runs uh, one of these really high-end benchmarks over and over again, about 10 times to see if temperature reduces its performance because many of these components are designed to run slower if they get too hot. Uh, we got a score there of 97.5%. Uh, they give you a cutoff as to a pass or a fail at 97%, so it did kind of sneak in there, but I think generally the cooling on it isn't bad just because the uh, GPU is blowing its hot air out the top here, so I think it's going to be fine. I don't think you'll see a lot of thermal throttling while uh, you're in the middle of a game. And the fan noise on this isn't all that loud, but it's always there. So even when it's at idle, you'll hear some fans running. It's got the CPU fan, the power supply fan, and of course the GPU fan. Uh, all of them may not be on at the same time together, but generally they're there. Uh, under load, it isn't all that loud, but it is always audible. So if you're thinking about maybe using this in your home theater, given its relatively small form factor, uh, know that there will be some fan noise going on there. I did have some pretty good luck though with it as a home theater device. So I hooked it up to our home theater nook over there earlier. I got the DTS HD working just fine. 
4K video worked fine. Uh, so I think if you're looking to play back movies on here, it will do well. It's also able to, most of the time, uh, play back our uh, test file here. This is that Jellyfish 140 megabits per second 4K file. It's an HEVC 10-bit, so it's kind of the top of the line for video formats here. It's able to keep up with it without too many issues. Uh, there is a drop frame you see there, but it might have just been when I first started it up. It's generally been able to keep up with it. I did get some weird colors on this when I had it hooked up to my home theater receiver and my uh, 4K television, but it seems to be working fine running through my video system here. So I think that issue might have been on my end over there, not necessarily with uh, what's going on inside of this device. But uh, know that the uh, KB Lake generation of Intel processors is more optimized for some of this higher end video these days. But I think you'll have a pretty decent amount of uh, success with this as a home theater device, provided you don't mind the fan noise. So that is the Lenovo Y710 Cube and a pretty decent little gaming machine. It's relatively portable with its handle up here. A little heavy, but uh, not unreasonable to uh, be able to transit it around to your various events that you might be attending with it. Uh, looks nice, performs pretty decently about where it should given what it has inside for hardware and uh, not such a bad configuration. Again, yes, you can build your own, but if you're looking to get one out of the box that just works, this one may not be such a bad choice. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.